Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So time marches on. It's already three years since I started taking NMN. In this video, I'll cover in detail February, March and April of 2022. And you'll be able to look at the scores going all the way back to April 2019, which is when I started my NMN experiment. Enough offering off me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what the results are. So before I start the review, I need to mention a couple of things which I think will have influenced these particular results. Uh, there should have been an update in December, but because of COVID and the typhoon that hit the Philippines, which is where I was in December, the cargo boxes that were shipped from the Middle East to the Philippines were delayed. And in those boxes were my biometric scale, so I couldn't take any measurements at all. Uh, staying in the hotel for six months and not being able to cook meant I had to rely on either room service or eating out of restaurants, which meant I was also, also unable to follow my normal diet. Again, because of the typhoon closing down all the gyms in my local area, my last really good gym session was in December 2021. I've been to the gym here a few times since I got back to the Middle East in March, but I know I'm not physically where I was in December 2021. Uh, I'll make mention of these issues as I go through the results, but not in any detail. Um, the instant gratification freaks who have jumped this and gone straight to the middle or the end of the video um, will not have a clue about what I'm talking about um, when I just make a very small reference to these to these factors. So let's jump into the spreadsheet. So first of all, let's take a look at my weight. You can see that the last time I weighed myself using the scales was June last year, and I was 86.7, 191 pounds. That's now gone up to 88.9 kilos, which is 196 pounds. So an increase of 2.2 kilos, which is around five pounds. But then that's to be expected, bearing in mind that I haven't had access to the gym or my bicycle um, as I normally would, probably for the last six or seven months. And that's down to to COVID, lockdowns, and getting the the, um, the virus twice in those six months, uh, and also the typhoon in the Philippines closing the gyms, um, and also restrictions on movement. So that's it for my weight. Let's take a look at my BMI score, my body mass index. It was 28.3, it's now 28.9, so up 0.6 from the last check, down 1.1. Uh, I thought it would have gone up higher than that. Um, technically, using this metric, I'm um, still overweight because I'm not below 25. But if you watch previous reviews and you watch my video on why I believe the BMI metric is archaic and needs to be updated, then you'll know that I don't hold I don't hold much credence in this number whatsoever. So BMI score up 0.6. Moving on, let's take a look at my percentage body fat. So last time it was 24.10, it's now 25.20, so up 1.1 since the last check and down 1.3 since the first set of new scales. So another point to mention here is from April 19 to 2020, you'll see that's in gray. That's when I was checking my um, biometric measurements using the gym or using the scales at Gold's Gym. Uh, if you've followed me for a while, you know they doubled their prices overnight. So I left them and in April 20, I bought a set of Omron biometric scales that I could use myself. I used those up until July 2021, then shipped them to the Philippines. I didn't bring those back with me because they would have made a massive dent in my baggage allowance, but I bought another set of the same scales. So although it's the same manufacturer and the same make of scale, the same reference number or same code number, it's not the exact same set of scales. So I'm not sure if that would have made a difference. Um, so at 1.1 since the last time I checked, and I thought, honestly, I would have been a much higher percentage of body fat, bearing in mind um, the amount of exercise or the normal amount of exercise I would have done has been drastically reduced because of uh, COVID and also because of the typhoon. So that's it for my percentage body fat. So let's take a look at my muscle mass. It was 34.6. It's now 33.9. So down 0 0.7 since the last check. Uh, and honestly, I thought it would have been down a lot more than that. Not being able to train resistance training, lifting weights since December last year. Um, although I've been in the gym since about the 15th of March this year, so most of March and all of April, I thought my, my, my muscle mass would have been down a lot more than just 0 0.7. Moving on, let's take a look at my basal metabolic rate. It was 1786. 
now 1811 so that's up and that's to be expected because as your body weight goes up you need to burn more calories to to remain at the at the same level um, not really a metric you can use to target fitness uh, or longevity but a good number if you're trying to get your body into a caloric deficit so that's it for my basal metabolic rate so let's take a look at my waist size it was 35 inches it's now up to 35.5 I reckon from December to March, that probably went up uh, further than that. And that's come down to 35.5 because I've been in the gym and exercising more regularly, probably for the last six weeks. Uh, but still a number I want to bring down. Um, <clears throat> I think that the measurement of your waist being half of your height is far more accurate with regard to fitness and health than the BMI scale. So up half an inch. But I reckon by the time I do this in another three months, it will have come down because it's definitely a figure I'm trying to bring down. So that's it for my waist size. So let's look at my visceral fat. Uh, it was 13. It's now up to 14. Not sure if that's anything to do with the new set of scales. That said, it's a number that I do want to bring down. Uh, this is a marker of um, disease, uh, metabolic syndrome, etc. So hopefully in the next three months this is a number I will be able to bring down from 14 so that's it for visceral fat so let's take a look at my sleep you can pause the video and look at the scores or the 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 data in more detail if you want but for the for the quarter my average sleep was seven hours overall uh, the quarter before was seven hours and five minutes so not too bad there <clears throat> and that's not necessarily the last quarter because I didn't record any of these stats because I didn't have the biometric scales to do the whole thing um, and it would have thrown the, the 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 records out of whack if you like so light sleep was four hour 40 that's down quite a lot from five hours 24 which was uh, in July last year average sleep one hour 22 very close to one hour 23 so no problems there and REM sleep was 56 minutes the average for the last quarter was an hour so <clears throat> sleep is something that you definitely should focus on because anti-aging uh, things you can affect without having to take supplements etc are things such as sleep nutrition exercise and reducing stress so fairly good sleep scores i hope to see those replicated if not improved um the next time i do these uh, do this review right moving on let's look at my resting heart rate again you can pause the video and look at the score since i started this um in may 2020 you can see that um on average it's been 58.25, 60.25, and 62.25 up because I'm normally on average in the 58, 57 region. Uh, for the quarter, the average is 60.25, which again is up. It's normally 58, 59, 59. Uh, I think that's because, I know it's because I haven't been able to do as much aerobic exercise as I used to with uh, my bike uh, having gone, um, I bought a new bike, but I haven't been out riding it as often as I normally would. That said, 60.25 still puts someone who's now 58 uh, in the excellent category. 61 would make me great, so happy with great or excellent, but definitely happy to still be in the excellent range with an average of 60.25. So that's it for my uh, rest in heart rate. So, as I said, this will be a review of my subjective stats for February, March and April 2022. Uh, and I might make reference to some elements that are pertinent to the three months when I was stuck in the Philippines and unable to exercise and um, unable to eat as normally as I would because of typhoon or debt. Let's quickly take a look at my supplement regime for the last three months. Nicotinamide mononucleotide, 1.5 grams a day. 1.5 grams a day of trans resveratrol and mixed into that is the one tablespoon of dried parsley 1.5 grams of berberine 1.5 grams of tmg trimethylglycine 5000 international units of vitamin d3 and i take 10000 a day on sunday and thursday because that's a number that i want to get up and i want it to stay high 200 sorry 120 micrograms of vitamin k2 and that's the mk7 version 250 milligrams of magnesium, and that's the L3 and 8 version. 200 milligrams of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and it's the high molecular weight that you need to be taking if you are indeed taking it. 
2.4 grams of fisetin, and that's on the first, second, and third of each month, and 2.5, sorry, 2.4 grams of quercetin, and again on the first, second, and third of each month. This was not a problem uh, in maintaining, unlike my diet and my exercise, because I was able to carry these supplements with me wherever I went. So overall feeling with regard to energy, um, no change there. I'm still going to record that as high and steady. I thought not being able to exercise as often or as intensely as normal after the typhoon would have affected it. But I've got to admit, since the last time I did an update, my overall feeling, my energy levels have remained exactly the same. So let's talk quickly about napping. Um, we've just finished Ramadan. And as for the last two years, um, when I wasn't able to eat at lunchtime, I started to take my NMN at three in the afternoon. I found my sleep was disrupted at night and also felt sleepy in the afternoon. Um, if I took it in the morning, um, I still kind of felt sleepy in the afternoon, but my sleep wasn't as badly affected. I'm now back to taking it at noon uh, and everything is back to normal. Motivation. My motivation has remained high and steady. Uh, obviously, being stuck in the UAE for nearly four months with a family in the Philippines was not good emotionally. But as far as my motivation is concerned, no real change. So that was good there. Gym performance for the last four months, uh, alone in the hotel, I had plenty of time to train and probably did more than I normally would. Uh, no bike riding because I'd sold my bike, uh, but lots more walking. From December to March, uh, walking, riding, jogging, etc. in the Philippines was okay, but no gym sessions because all the gyms were closed following Typhoon Odette. I have joined a gym since I got back to the Middle East in March uh, and I've been training and riding my new bike a few times um, slowly set, slowly getting back into that. Uh, one point to highlight is that I've lost a lot of muscle mass when I was in the Philippines especially my arms my chest and my shoulders. Um, it's only taken about a month maybe six weeks to start to feel like I'm getting back to where I was before um, quicker than I thought but I'm nowhere near where I was in December 2021. Uh, with regard to injuries, absolutely nothing, um, which is good. Um, sickness, so I've had COVID-19 twice. I had the Delta variant in 2021 and Omicron in December 2021 in the Philippines. Delta was like a very bad cold. Uh, I was sick for maybe three to five days and I treated myself with paracetamol and throat lozenges. And for the Omicron, which I got in December, was extremely slight. Um, I've actually, when people have asked me to describe it, I've said I've had worse hangovers. Uh, and I treated that maybe two, three, four days maximum. I treated that just with antihistamines because my nose and my eyes were running. Uh, that's it for my subjective stats. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I'm just going to cover what I think are pertinent facts with regard to the last three months, maybe six months with regard to this update. Uh, I think the biggest challenge I faced was maintaining my diet in the hotel and then maintaining my exercise regime when I was in the Philippines. Um, also, my diet in the Philippines was, was severely hampered. The amount of meat and fish I would normally eat reduced uh, quite a bit. And I found myself eating more eggs than I normally would, but unfortunately more processed food, um, things like bacon than I normally would too. Um, now that I'm back here, I'm hoping that, well, I know that I'm going to be able to eat the, the more regular diet that I'm used to. Uh, access to the gym. When I left in March, the gyms still weren't open and didn't look like they were going to be opening either. Um, the one I particularly like going to was completely decimated by the typhoon uh, and stripped of all the equipment. The roof had been ripped off. and I don't think that gym is probably going to open again ever. Had I been staying there, I probably would have looked into buying my own gym equipment and setting up some kind of home gym. After three months of being there, psychologically, I found it uh, it affected me with regard to not being able to lift weights and exercise in the way that I'd like to. Um, that's obviously now changed because I'm back in the in the in the Middle East. Um, I've signed up to a gym and I've started training, and I'm I'm fee finding the benefits psychologically. I'm feeling more more happier uh, lifting weights in the way I normally would. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to see your comments with regard to the stats that I've gone over. Um, hope to see you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.